All right, so today we're going to use Puppeteer to do some browser automation. So I haven't used Puppeteer. I did use similar tools. Puppeteer is something that works in Node.js and it's basically just automating the browser actions. So if you wanted to go to a website, go to a certain page, fill a form, this is the type of stuff that it can let you do. So the websites I'm going to use for this are going to be this test websites. One is this example, webscraping.com. And from this, I'm gonna be using the search page that has some search form to fill out with a search button. And then I also have this other one, which is this books to scrape.com, which basically is similar to like an e-commerce sort of site. As usual, we're gonna need Node.js and Visual Studio Code. If you don't have those installed, I have a video how to do that. Now I'm just gonna create a folder on my computer really quickly here. So I'll just say test scrape. And then I'm gonna need to open this folder in Visual Studio Code. So I'll open VS Code and I'll just drag this over here and that should open this. So that's all good. I'm gonna go under view and integrated terminal. Here we go. Now we have our terminal, we have our empty folder. Now in this empty folder, I need to initialize my node project. So I'm gonna do npm init dash y. And I'm gonna do dash y so I don't have to answer all the questions. If you wanna answer all those questions, just go ahead and not do the dash y and it will basically be a bunch of stuff you need to type some answers to, so I'm gonna do this. So that gave me this package.json, see? That initiates this, so that's good, nothing to do on this, good enough. So this is all done, now I need to install Puppeteer. So I'm gonna go back to their website. Now Puppeteer installs Chromium browser. Basically that's the open source version of Chrome without all the stuff on top of it. And that's fine, so it's gonna download and install it for you as long as you run this command. So here, see it says for Mac, it's gonna take this much space for Windows and so on. It can also use Firefox, so you can set it up to do Firefox too. I'm not gonna worry about that, this is good enough. So I'm gonna just copy this npm installation command, go to my terminal and run this. And see it's downloading Chromium right now. So let's see if I have any errors. Looks good. So let's create a file for us to run. Test.js. So I'm gonna go to their website and we'll just scroll down and copy a little bit of code. So see usage, scroll down. I'm just gonna copy this first snippet of code. Go back to our JS file, paste it right in here, save it. So now we have this and it should basically open the browser, start a new page, go to this website example.com and it should create a screenshot example.png. So the website I want to go to is gonna be, well, let's say this link. So I'm just gonna replace the link and it has to have the whole HTTP or HTTPS in front of it, just like this. So I'm gonna have that and then it's gonna create the screenshot file. So let's just call it sc.png. So I just wanna test run this and see what happens before we move any forward. So this is test.js. So to run this, we'll just do node test.js. So if I'd enter. So as you can see, I didn't really see the browser or anything, but I have this sc.png. And if I open it, as you can see, that's a screenshot of that particular page. So that worked out actually. It would be nice if we could actually see what's happening. And I'm sure there is a way to do that. So let's see. 
use headless mode so launch headless false oh so by default it's headless so we cannot see what's going on but if we do this so right here I can pass an object apparently like this and let's not close the browser this time I'm gonna comment that line out and save this and let's rerun this code and see what happens so now we should be able to actually see I'm also gonna comment this screenshot we don't want to make a screenshot so let's just open the browser open a new page and go to this particular page so right now if I run this again node that test.js so let me resize this a little bit so you can see see it opens a new tab here that's the new page it went to that website and this is that website and apparently the site is really small and I'm sure we can probably control that as well. Let's try to now go to this box that says name and type some text in addition to doing all of this, right? To be able to do that, we should need to find this particular box. So usually they will use some CSS selectors. So I'm gonna do right click inspect. Let's do it one more time. So it zooms in on that. See, there is that. I'm gonna just have to zoom in on this so you can see what's going on. So again, I'm gonna go here, right click inspect, and you can see it kinda zooms in. It's not always gonna zoom in exactly to the thing you want, although it did this time, but it's gonna zoom in in the area. You have to find where is that particular box. In this case, it's an input box and it has an ID, search term. So I'm gonna copy that ID. I'm gonna need it to find that input. So close this thing. And I'm gonna close this browser as well. So go to this and let's just add a comment with that ID that we're gonna need in a second. So let's go figure out after we go to this page, what do we need to do? So I'm gonna open their documentation. So it's the browser, the browser opens a page now we have the page object. So you do go to, so it seems like we need to look into this page object to see what's going on. There is page. Does it have like methods and stuff on this? So events, namespace methods. Awesome, look at that. So we have all these methods we can do on the page. I like this documentation so far. See, there's this click that should allow you to click on something. Now we just wanna type in the box. Let's see, is it like key or keyboard, something like that. Oh, type, maybe it's just called type. Let's click on that. Yeah, awesome, see, it says page.type and then selector and the actual text. So that should be really easy to do. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take the page and that's this variable here on top and we're gonna do dot and we should have type method and auto complete works too. And we need, see the selector. So the selector is gonna be text and it needs to be an ID. So in CSS, the IDs are pound keys. So we need the CSS selector. So we're gonna do pound key that search term. So that's gonna pick which element to type in. And then the second argument according to their docs was the text we wanna type. Let's see, what is some text that we can actually search and find in this website? Let me test this. What was on this website? So let's just do Brazil, right? So let's see what happens. If I type that, hit search, does it give me anything? Yeah. So yeah, so I'm gonna type that. So I'm gonna go here and type Brazil. Now you'll notice that this is an ASIC function. Now. Once you understand things like promises, you will look at this in a different way. But for right now, just think about this async function as something that you need to wait for. Because what happens when you open a website page, so for example, if you go to a page and open a certain page from a website, it takes some time to load, right? See, we have to wait until this page loads. And we need to explain our code to also wait for this to load until it goes to the next step. Otherwise, it's gonna go to the next step really fast before this is even loaded and try to do the next thing and it's gonna fail. So to do that, we need to say, you have to wait until this is done. 
And that's the way you can look at it for now. So this is why there is this thing. So when we go to the browser and open the browser, it's gonna take some time to load the browser. So we need to wait until the browser is done loading. And then we get the browser object. So the same way we have to wait until the second page is open. Then we have to wait until we go to this page. So this is why you have this await all the time, which means we also have to do a wait on our action here and make sure that is done. So that should now go and type Brazil in the box. So if I save this and just go back and rerun this, and this is apparently still running. Let me exit out of that from my computer. So when I exit out of Chromium, see that's what happened too. But now let's run this again. So node test the same thing. See, now it went there and now we have Brazil in the box. Now the next thing I want to do is click on the search. So if I right click on the search, inspect, now we need to find what is that search. So let's actually close all of this and do it in our browser. Let me actually reload this. So this search, if I do inspect, that will be ID search. So lucky for us, this website has IDs all over the place. So we should be able to find it really easy. So that means now we're gonna take that page and I think that had something like click on it and we should have the autocomplete now helping us and see selector and what is the options? Options seems to be optional, there's a question mark. So I think we just have to pass the selector. So if we just do our search, and this is an ID, so it's gonna go with a pound key. Now we just have to await for this to happen again. So we're gonna add it here. So if I save this and rerun this, what should happen now, we should be able to see the search results because we should click on that search too. So let's go and do this. Brazil is displaying now because we clicked on the search results and here we are. Now at that point you could say after I search, I wanna click on this Brazil, right? So let's just do that one step too so you can see how this is gonna work. So again, I want to go to the next step here. Let's say we type Brazil, hit search. Then we got this result. I wanna inspect and see what is that result showing up as. So apparently that's a table right here inside of this div results. And inside of that table, we have the row, we have the TD, and we have a div and we have a hyperlink. So there is that hyperlink. Now let's say I want to next click on this hyperlink. So I go to that page. Now I should be able to find it with this structure. So we have this results ID with a table inside and I'm gonna skip some of this. Then I'll go TR, TD and A. So that should find us that hyperlink so we can actually click on it. Hopefully, let's try this and see what happens. So this is ID, the rest are elements. So I'm gonna copy this. Let's go back. You wanna make sure you exit out of Chromium if it's still running. Now I'm gonna go here and do the next step and it's gonna be again page dot click. And this time we're clicking on that, well, it was results, that was the ID, then we had a table, then we had a TR, then we had a TD, and then we have an A, which is the actual hyperlink inside of that table. I think that should work. So we should be able to do CSS selectors, I think like this. And again, we should await for this Let's save this and see if this works. So I'm gonna do this, rerun. I don't think that worked, so I don't see that clicking on this. So let's see what we got. Do we get an error? Seems like we do have an error, so. No node found for selector results, table TR TDA. Interesting. Okay, let's take a look at our docs for a second. Where's the click event? Method click. To search for an element to click. If there are multiple elements satisfying the selector, the first will be clicked. Options. 
button left, right, middle, click count, delay, returns a promise. Bear in mind that if click triggers a navigation event and there's a separate page wait for navigation promise to be resolved, you may end up So let's just see if there's just wait. So see there is wait for selector or function or timeout. And then there's this wait for selector. So let's try to do that because that is not available maybe at that point. So it's looking for it and it doesn't find it. So wait for selector. So we do page wait for selector and then we can do something. Okay, I think that should work. Let's try this and see what happens. So I'm gonna copy this, go back to this, and just put this right in here. And the selector we're waiting for is this. So I'm gonna await for that, and then hopefully when that's available, we'll click on that particular link. So let's save this, go back and reload and see what happens. Awesome, see, now we waited for that to show up and then we clicked on the actual hyperlink and that took us to this other page. So now we're able to basically do some basic navigation. So we can wait for something to show up on a page if it takes some time with this wait for selector, we can click on things if we have to. We can type things in boxes if we have to. So this should allow you to, if necessary, for example, there's a login form to enter your email, your password, etc. Click on login button, get inside of a portal. Again, quit Chromium. And again, you could just close it. So then it will auto close itself. But I want you to be able to see what's going on, so we need to keep that open. So that's our main structure. So you can see how we have this function, and inside of this function, you basically just give the steps. And with every step pretty much here that you need to interact with a browser, you need to have a wait for it to finish it until it goes to the next step. And in this case, see, even though we have this await for click, that's just waiting for the click. So it's gonna click, so that's done with a click. But after the click, it needs to wait for loading. So that's why we also have to do this wait for selector to make sure we wait until that particular thing shows up on a page so we can click on that as well. So let's move on to something else. So let's try to 